In our discussion on plane mirrors, we said whenever we look into a plane mirror, our brain forms an image, a virtual image, behind that mirror. So now we're going to examine the formation of images as a result of concave mirrors. Now, in the previous lecture, we saw that when the object is found very far away from the concave mirror, for example, an infinite distance away, the image will be formed exactly at the focus, and that's because the reflected rays of light will all intersect at the focus. So let's see exactly what we mean by looking at the following diagram. So, let's suppose our object is found an infinite distance away to the left of our concave mirror. Now, when the rays of light bounce off of our object, they will travel and eventually reach our concave mirror. Now, because these rays of light are found an infinite distance away, are traveling from an infinite distance away, that basically means that when they come close to our concave mirror, they are incoming at an angle parallel with respect to our principal axis. So the principal axis is essentially an axis that goes through the following two points as well as through the center of our concave mirror. So the principal axis goes through the radius of curvature as well as the focus and the center of the concave mirror. So because these rays of light are parallel, they will all go through the focus and the intersection will be the point where the image is formed. Now, what if we take our object and we bring it closer to our concave mirror. So specifically, what happens if the object is placed between the focus and the radius of curvature? Where will the image form. So to answer this question, we have to follow the following procedure. This method will essentially allow us to find where our image is formed for concave as well as convex mirrors. So let's begin by looking at step number one. So these three steps essentially involve looking at specific light rays that bounce off the image, travel to the mirror, bounce off the mirror, and then we're examining the position, the point where all these light rays intersect. And that point is the image point. It's the point where our image will be formed. So let's see exactly what we mean by looking at the first step. So we're examining incoming light ray number one. And this light ray will bounce off of our image or will bounce off of our object will be parallel with respect to the principal axis. And when it reflects off of our mirror, it will reflect and travel directly through the focus. So let's see exactly what we mean by looking at diagram one. So in diagram one, we have our concave mirror, we have the principal axis, and our object is shown by the following purple arrow. So the height of our object is shown by the height of this arrow. So we have incoming light ray number one that is bouncing off of our object and travels directly parallel with respect to the principal axis. So, because it is parallel, that basically means it will reflect and will pass through the focus. Now let's move on to step number two. Now we're looking at an incoming light ray. Let's call it ray number two. And this light ray essentially bounce, uh, bounces off the object at the same exact point as in case one, but now it travels directly through the focus. Because it travels directly to the focus, when it bounces off our concave mirror, the reflected ray number two will be parallel with respect to our principal axis. So finally, let's move on to step number three. So, 
Step number three is shown in the following diagram. So once again, we're examining a third right, a light ray. Let's call it a light ray number three. And this light ray it, uh, is bouncing off of our object at the same exact point as before. It's traveling to our concave mirror and it will bounce off, reflect and travel in the same exact opposite direction. And eventually it will pass through the radius of curvature. So now if we combine these three diagrams into a, uh, into a single diagram, we get the following result. So we have ray number one that is traveling parallel with respect to our axis, bounces off our object, bounces off our uh, concave mirror, and will travel through the focus as shown. Now we uh, draw a ray number two, we draw a ray number three as shown, and then we look at the point where these rays intersect. And that is the image point. And to draw our image, we essentially begin at our principal axis and we draw directly down to our image point as shown by the following blue arrow. So this is our object and this is our image. So if a person stands directly behind the image, these light rays will essentially reach the eye and the person will be able to see our image. So because these rays of light actually pass through the image point, that means the image will be a real image. So it will appear on a projection screen if we place that projection screen directly behind our image point. So let's look at our conclusion. So once again, the three rays of light leave the object at the same exact point, reflect off of the mirror, and meet at, at some point of intersection. That is, they meet where the image is formed and this is known as the image point. Since the rays of light actually pass through the image point, the image is real. Now notice the object is upright but the image is not upright, it's downright and that basically means that the, uh, the object will be upright but the image will essentially be downright. It will appear upside down.